If you were to walk around a corner and find yourself face to face with a man in a long dark jacket with longish hair wearing a hat like, like this, if you are in a Stephen King novel, or perhaps a wrestling arena, or even a western film, you'd probably be best off if you turned around and went back to wherever you came from. If, however, you're at an event like the Austin Celtic Festival, you're far more likely to have stumbled upon the venerable and far more benevolent Paddy Keenan. Yes, that Paddy Keenan. Woo! Paddy Keenan! Now that I have your attention, let me step back for a moment, and I promise we'll come back around to Paddy Keenan in, in just a few minutes. Uh, a couple of weeks before the Austin Celtic Festival, I finally made it to a meeting of the Austin Pipers Club. There were three Pipers there besides myself. One uh, was the host, who is, I guess, the, the organizer and leader of the group. It's pretty democratic. There aren't any official officers. But uh, I know he's been luring people into the Illin Pipe world for at least a decade, so I assume he's been playing significantly longer than that. The other two attendees were fairly new players, one a little bit newer than me who's just been practicing on a chanter and got her hands on an actual practice set with bellows and bag for the first time at that meeting, and she borrowed that from the other attendee, who is a reformed Highland Piper. Actually, I think he's still playing the Highland Pipes also, but he's just trying out the Illin Pipes, and I don't know how long he's been at it, but it sounded like probably in the six months to two years range, somewhere in there. In any case, I didn't learn anything absolutely earth-shattering, but I did make a few incremental improvements to my playing at that uh, meeting. I learned that though I abstractly knew that I should be playing with my right knee down a bit and the chanter kind of sitting low at an angle, I haven't been doing that so much. And so that's a pretty easy fix. Just go ahead and pay attention to that while I'm practicing and do that. I also learned that in order to tune my chanter, I can move the reed up and down in the neck. And so I had to pull it out a little bit to flatten my set to be in tune with the rest of the players. And finally, I discovered that I've been not really keeping a consistent pressure level with my, uh, with my bag arm here, and that between bellows pumps, I would start to go flat and lose a little volume because I just wasn't keeping a stable pressure. And so from that meeting onward, I made a point of trying to keep more pressure as the, the bag deflated a little bit on this arm. So back to the festival. Patty Keenan was one of the headliner performers and very fortunately for me, he taught a piping workshop. There were only three pipers, including myself, signed up for the workshop and there were two more attendees who didn't have pipes and I guess were just uh, auditing the class, as it were, checking it out. But uh, I was the, by far the least experienced of the three pipers. In any case, we spent most of the workshop learning a tune, just going over and over the, the phrases, trying to pick them up by ear, and uh, with Patty showing us different ways to ornament and inflect the notes. But at the beginning, he started out by asking us each to play a tune or a bit of the tune, and I played the A part of the Leitrim Fancy badly. Worse than I did on these videos previously because I was a bit nervous too. I think most of us were. Um, but he then gave us, you know, personal feedback, and uh, he continued to, to kind of give us feedback throughout the workshop. General lessons general things he he said that piper most pipers could stand to improve on is he encouraged us to really keep a, a very relaxed grip and to keep the chanter at a really severe angle so that it would be very comfortable when and if we ever move on to regulators uh and to do that he said don't feel compelled to keep the fingers in the same configuration you would when you're playing a whistle for example uh you know, let them, them fall at more of this kind of angle where only the first joint 
of the uh, the pointer finger on your right hand is covering the hole, and so you have more of this angle. He also emphasized feeling relaxed the whole time, letting the bag sit a little lower, not getting hunched up like this. In any case, in terms of personal feedback, he did tell me that I was basically doing everything wrong, so Pipe Watcher, you were vindicated. Uh, but he was very nice about it and gave me a number of pieces of advice on how to improve. He gave my chanter a tryout and uh, concluded that the reed is a soft, or a, maybe that's not the right term, but definitely an easy player. Uh, so that's not causing any of the problems that I'm having. He noted that I was using way too much effort on my bag arm. You know, halfway through the workshop, I was shaking from this arm was kind of quivering from the exertion. He said that should not be the case. He also told me that I was perpetually out of air and that I should be pumping far sooner. And I thought that was that I have been, you know, filling the bag as much as it could and then waiting until there was room for a, another bellows full before I would put another pump in there. But uh, he, he kept saying, you know, pump, what are you waiting for? And so I didn't quite figure it out during the workshop, but when I got home and spent some more time practicing and just working on my own, I have deduced that I have not been filling the bag nearly as much as I should be, that I'm assuming that it's going to pop or something if I, if I overfill it a little bit. But really, I, I think that it's probably appropriate to get to pump a little extra air in there so the bag is forced to stretch a little bit so it kind of does some of the work of of getting the uh of maintaining the pressure and i i've been kind of internalizing what i've heard people say about the right arm really doing the work of providing the pressure and the left arm providing the control in any case since i've started doing that the extra pressure has made it possible for me to hit the high notes that before were just I wasn't able to do. And I'm not exhausted, and so I can practice half an hour. So I've taken a step back in what I'm focusing on in my practice sessions. I'm still going through the Leitrim Fancy and a couple other tunes, usually at the end of my practice session, still in that kind of a rewarding myself mentality. Uh, I haven't really made any forward progress on those because now I'm learning everything at a, a higher bag pressure and so I'm accidentally hitting notes in the higher octave when they should be in the lower octave and everything but I think it's just a matter of getting used to a, a new situation. In any case what I've been focusing on and so I'm not gonna play any tunes today I'll keep working on those and hopefully by the time I get to the next video I'll, I'll have something to show for it but right now, let me just play a couple of long tones. I don't know if you'll really see much of a difference in these videos. But I'm going to be keeping this higher pressure level on my bag. And let me see if I can you know, go up into the high register and demonstrate the relative effortlessness of it now. Patty Keenan!